Got another, another bundle of uh, gaming stuff here from the old J.A. Pan. This is actually, uh, you see the seller, seller right there. They have, this is kind of one of the uh, bigger sellers on eBay. Uh, Hit Japan. Hit Dash Japan. And they're usually pretty good. Um, you kind of have to... Uh, they have a lot of, I guess, more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Mainstream stuff as well. Um, they have retro games. And I guess retro games is fairly mainstream now. But uh, anyways, they have a wide variety of stuff. They sell a lot of Japanese products, and retro games is just one of them, I think. So that's what I was trying to get at. I kind of like how they packaged it. This has some kind of odd, uh, um, kind of an odd variety of things in it. So it's kind of an unusual shape, and they kind of made a little mini palette out of it. So that's cool. But uh, we'll get this unboxed, uh, unwrapped here, and we'll. Uh, See how it, uh, see, see what's in there. Okay, so here we have the bundle undone here, and we can kind of start reviewing things. Um, right off the hop, we have a nice little stack of Super Famicom controllers here. Um, that was the, their pricing on, um, on these was actually what made me look for a few other things, uh, because once, once you got like three items, they, uh, they, discount the shipping pretty heavily. So these were, I got all of these for like maybe 15 bucks. If, uh, uh, you know, without the shipping, there would be like some, some amount of shipping on there too. So depending on, you know, if you split the shipping evenly amongst everything, you know, maybe uh, more like 20 bucks or whatever, but these didn't work out. Ended up being a couple bucks each in pretty nice shape. There's a couple that have some, some yellowing on them. Uh, no big deal. It's no big deal. They yeah, actually sold a couple of these locally uh, past couple weeks. Um, just a uh, someone that was buying a couple other things wanted some a uh, couple Super Nintendo controllers as well. So I don't have any of those, but I have some Super Famicom controllers. Um, so he bought a couple of them, and that got me got me to thinking about it. And I wanted to have uh, wanted to have a couple more for myself. So, anyways, the two I gave him were the ones uh, out of my stash. It's not real often I get to play multi-tap uh, games, you know, multiplayer games, but I want to have the uh, option to do so uh, should it arise. So I wanted to replace the couple that I sold, and then uh, I have a loose one of these multi-taps, so I think I will take the two out of here to replace uh, replace the two I sold, the, you know, take the two nice ones from my stash, and then uh, sell three and my loose super multi tap as a as a bundle and then because i i got the the hori uh, multi tap um installed over there on my super nintendo it's a lot smaller it's the uh, the only one that was really small enough to have, I justify having plugged in all the time didn't take up too much space this one and the uh the uh the one that shaped the super multi tap to shaped like bomber man's head that's a uh, pretty bulky too um not as bulky as this but Anywho, so that's that's my plan for that. Um, when I go to, I'm sure all these work. You know, these these look these look like they're in nice shape, and you know, that's a trustworthy seller. But I'm going to show you guys a really easy way to do an input test for Super Nintendo, uh, any any Super Nintendo controller really. So um, may or may not know about it. It's not a big secret or anything, but it just uh, um, it's what I always use to input test any Super Nintendo controller of any kind so um let's take a yeah let's take a closer look at a couple of these things um this is a super multi-tap you can kind of see the it's kind of a cartoonish drawing of it here but that's the general shape of it and then i guess you got a real picture of it there see they're advertising that super joy card in there as well so that's uh that's fun but yeah um it's basic uh, basically the five player multi-tap you plug into the second player controller and gives you four um four more four ports out of that so you can go up to five players um a lot of games don't go all the way to five players some are only three and some are only four but uh, same same uh setup regardless so there's the box in pretty nice shape we got a couple couple little defects here and there but for its age it's pretty impressive actually real nice shape Let's see. I'm gonna take this. See if it slides out of here relatively easily. Maybe not. I thought that was a piece of rice. That's fine. Maybe not. 
Ну, нахи. Okay. We'll check out the uh, <clears throat> only N64 game I got in this bundle, which is SimCity 2000, which is a Japanese exclusive. Never uh, released it in um, the US or UK, you know, any PAL regions. It was a Japanese exclusive. So I don't know how familiar anyone watching this will be with, uh, you know, kind of the, this seems to be a graphical upgrade, or maybe this is uh, kind of like more of a port of the PC version of uh, SimCity 2000. As far as the PC games, uh, SimCity games I've played, the SimCity 3000 was the one I played the most of, so um, I think I might have played this one a little bit on the PC as well, but not the memories of that are, are fuzzy. So, um, anyways, yeah, this is like, this is likely to be like I said, the more more like PC port. They did have a uh, port of this game that was released on the Super Nintendo, uh, both in uh, in Japan and the Western world. And that one is uh, it struggles to run on the Super Nintendo, even with how much they've cut it back. So this is probably again a more proper port of the PC version. Eh, it's in Japanese. I don't know how much of a struggle it's going to be to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to play around with it a little bit, but it's obviously going to be a novelty. It'd be quite a, uh, quite a struggle to, uh, actually play through a full city build with that. Uh, here we have kind of a cool one. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, um, kind of a, a war strategy game, I think. Uh, obviously based on the Revolutionary War or whatever, so I have a cool collector's item, uh, Japanese exclusive as well, uh, ironically, at least I think so, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I don't recall seeing this one as a Super Nintendo release, but anyway, again probably not real likely to be very playable, well, uh, probably pretty text heavy, that screenshot there, yeah, but you know, again, I'll check it out, but it's mostly just a kind of a display piece. These loose games are all ones that, uh, again, seemed like a pretty good buy along with them. Uh, games I was going to kind of get one way or the other on Super Nintendo or ooh, that, or Super Famicom. So I went ahead and grabbed them. Uh, let's see. This one's Putty World. I think this was released as a, under a different name in the West. Uh... I think only in the UK though. That actually might be a uh, a UK a Euro game. Um, I'll be 100% honest with you. Okay, uh, I see SNK. This is uh, Fatal Fury, I think. So that's cool. And then we have Disney's Pinocchio, which uh, kind of on a bit of a mission to get at least uh, a loose copy of all the Disney game 16-bit Disney games, just because the uh, uh, if nothing else, the graphics are just so nice and. Um, all of them seem to be pretty good games too from the ones I've played too, so uh, uh, that's just another one on the list there. And uh, we already covered the Super Famicom controllers. And then we have, last but not least, this uh, uh, another N64 controller to add to the collection. Uh, this is, I, I've never gotten any of this particular model before. Uh, some controllers I have, you know, multiple colors of or whatever, but this will be the first. They didn't release a lot of colors of this. I think they did a, a, a kind of a, the midnight blue color, uh, maybe like a uh, like the clear, the smoke color. Then they made this clear. Uh, I don't know if they did like an ice blue. I think they might have a, a watermelon colored one, uh, but I think there's only about five colors total. But it uses some of the, um, you know, it's obviously one of the, it's a Hori, uh, Hori commander. So it's a, you know, one of those second party kind of deals. So it has, um, a lot of the same hardware as an original controller, but obviously it's very different in its shape. It's real, th uh, thin in this area. It feels a lot thinner with, than gripping a regular N64 controller. Then obviously you don't have the prongs. Um, the stick is the same. The stick's actually in pretty nice tight shape. So I will, uh, before giving any any, pro any amount of use, I'll take that apart and lube it and stuff to give it most life. Um, a and B buttons, C buttons, all that's the same. Uh, seem to be factory parts out of a controller. Regular N64 controller, L and R buttons as well. Uh, but with one major difference. Micro switched. Both the shoulder buttons are micro switched, which is the first thing I've seen 
on a uh, on at least a quality second party or first party controller from this era so that's interesting none of the other buttons are just the the shoulder buttons so that's uh kind of nice z button's definitely the same uh you know said so, uh probably the d-pad all that stuff is probably all interchangeable and then uh, your turbos just single speed i think yeah that's what it feels like single speed on Z, B, and A. So it's kind of a very bare bones turbo controller, but uh, again, it's one I didn't have any of. So, oh, there's no controller pack release on this either. That's very interesting. It's a notable difference. Hmm. Yeah, it has the click, the little clip for it still. How bizarre. Well, anyways, so um, again, I'm pretty sure all these work, but I'm going to show you my uh, Super Nintendo controller input test now. All right, you guys ready for the top secret controller test sauce? That's right, Kirby's Avalanche. There is an input test. And you can test anything that you plug into oh, uh, plug into P1 or P2 there. So you can test the D-pad, start and select. And like I said, I have no doubt that all these work just fine, but I just wanted to show you that. So there you go. That's the secret sauce on the controller test. Uh, I use Golden I007 to test uh, N64 controllers just because you can um, to start up the first mission and have, uh, that's a game that uses all the buttons right, right off the bat like that. So, uh, those are, I use that and then Goldeneye. So those are my controller test games. So anyways, that's probably gonna do it for this one. Thanks guys. See ya. Kirby's Avalanche, the chain reaction puzzle game.